YouTube, it is Prof Sales coming back at you with a live video show, something we don't do quite as many of, but here I am, live and in the flesh. And I am excited to be here tonight to talk to you about the bulk business game, the bulk book business game. And our guest tonight is David, who is down in St. Peter's, Florida. David is having a couple technical difficulties and we're he is um, trying to clear all those up and get those situated, and we expect for him to be on really, really soon. So until then, you'll have to make do with me. So sorry about that. But if you haven't been to this channel before, then you should know that we are about um, this entrepreneurial journey, side hustles, making a secondary income or even a primary income for yourself. And doing that primarily through e-commerce sites like eBay and Amazon. But there's other ways to do it, too. So we don't um, discriminate against any of those. And I am so excited that you guys are here tonight joining us. And it's going to be a good show as soon as we can uh, connect with our guests here in a moment. So um, I just wanted to tell you that the, the bulk business game, the bulk book game, is something that I have thought about many times myself. And... I've talked myself into and out of it several times. I, I come back to the same challenges. I come back to the same, um, the same, the same situations that I just don't know how I would handle them as easily. And I'm curious if any of you guys out there have done the similar and you know, there's, there's parallels to the bulk, the bulk book game. There's parallels and things like, you know, wholesale and private label, just moving a lot of items buying at a low price, selling at, you know, not a super high price, but just being able to, um, you know, move product out very quickly, keep cash flow in. Like these are all real considerations when you have sort of this bulk mindset, you're trying to move a lot of items in a short amount of time. And I've never really been able to exactly figure out how to, how to get around those problems, if that makes sense. Um, but I know that they can be gotten around and that's why um, it's going to be interesting to hear from David here in a moment about how he's gotten around those um, obstacles. Um, as a matter of fact, he's, he's messaging me right now. So I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to send him a, a link here to um, our, our little chat. And yeah, it's just very interesting that, um, you know, how do you get, how do you get the bulk business up and running? How are you able to um, keep it going? How are you able to make sure that you're getting enough sell through? And to be perfectly honest, I don't know how to do that. Um, I think that a lot of those things, um, I, I'm probably scared. Let me send this to him right quick. I'm probably scared that, um, you know, I think that I would go out and spend a lot of money. Um, I would get a warehouse. I would get equipment. I would get rollers. I would get forklifts. I would get pallet jacks. I would sign for a lease. I would have, you know, all this expense, maybe even employees and so on. And then all of a sudden, you know, after a few months, I would realize that I'm not really selling through, you know, get all this up and running. I'm not really selling through enough of this to really um, make ends meet. So, you know, it's always been like, I guess I've always kind of looked at um, ways that it was not going to work instead of ways that it was going to work, if that makes sense. But at the same time, I know that there's a lot of people out there doing the bulk game. There's a lot of people doing games where they're moving a lot of inventory for, you know, maybe not a huge amount of money, but they're just moving it, moving it, moving it, moving it, turning it over and keeping cash flow in. So it's a good market. It's a good model. I just don't know how to figure it out for me or if it ever really made sense for me. And I think you really got to jump into it head first. Um, so that's God. It's going to be interesting to hear what David's take is on that. He's, he's actually, I've sent him the link and I'm just waiting for him to connect and he'll be in here shortly. Hopefully um, Linda ask, uh, did you stop working at Amazon? No, I actually still am working at Amazon. I'm looking to take over Amazon. Uh, Jeff has decided Jeff, that's Jeff Bezos. Um, he's decided that, you know, it may not be a thing for him anymore. He may want to step down and, you know, I'm in the running. So we'll see. Uh, Duncan's in the house tonight. Ernesto, good evening to you, sir. 
Marrakesh, um, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Also, uh, who else is here? Landshark Pickers here. Good evening as well. Nice to see some of you guys. Uh, Hank, Hank All In Cash, one of my favorite uh, YouTube names ever because it's kind of poker related, which is cool. Um, <laughs> Jeff and Prof are best friends. Yeah. So I think that a lot of um, people kind of talk themselves out of this bulk game before they even get started. And I guess kind of that's what I'm doing as well. I mean, I don't know if any of you guys in the chat have had the same issue, but I definitely have. Um, so I'm going to be, it's going to be interesting. It looks like he's starting to connect right now. I just saw a, a link come in. Um, oh, hey, there he is. Oh, hang on just a second. Let me see if I can add uh, uh, Rob here. Um, I think David maybe his middle name. Hang on a second. Uh, let's see what we got here. Let me see if I can add him to the stream. Oh, there he is. What's up? What's going on? How you doing? Hey, man. Good to see you. Uh, glad you got glad you got in there. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, yeah, no, that's uh, we have a we have a couple unexpected guests coming to town, so we've been running ragged today. Was it family members or somebody else? Uh, just some friends from out of town. Ah, uh, no worries, no worries. Um, glad you can make it. Can you hear okay? Um, we can hear you fine. It sounds like. Yeah, all right. yeah. Let me know if you're getting any feedback from the mic. I'm on a laptop right now, so. Yeah. No. No. Cool. Cool. Um, well, thanks, man. Thanks for coming on, and um, I'm interested to hear. We. I was just talking to people about the bulk game, bulk books, and so on, and like you know some of the reasons why I haven't got into it. And I think some of the other reasons people and we'll it'll be kind of interesting to hear that um, why, you know, like like how you overcame those obstacles and so on, because I know you guys have jumped in uh, head yeah. first, which is awesome. A um, couple quick programming notes for you guys um, in the description of this video. You'll see some links to uh, Insane Book Hustle, which which is the YouTube channel, which you're just starting. So content will be coming. Yeah. Then, so that's, uh, that's my business partner, Dave. I'm Rob. Uh, Dave is actually, he's doing a little bit of a tour right now of the warehouse to some other folks. So Ah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Gotcha. Um, all right. Cool deal, man. Um, yeah. Cause I'd seen like in the, I'd read like an article about the the store and so on. So I might've seen, I might've seen your name in it. I think maybe. Probably. Yeah. 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 Cool deal. All right. Cool. So we got both the partners here. Um, but yeah, there's also an Instagram account, Insane Book Hustle, and Facebook group, Insane Book Hustlers. So if you guys want to check that out, please, please yep. check that out. And Dave is also going to be putting out um, some content on his YouTube channel. Um, he's got it up and running. He just is, you know, in the process of creating content. So cool. All right, man. So, um, all right. Well, Rob, I don't really know yours or Dave's story with this. Yeah. So if you can tell everybody a little bit about like how you guys, you know, got into this opportunity, that would be cool. Sure. So uh, I was Air Force. Dave was Army. Uh, both of us got out, um, didn't know each other, uh, happened to move down to Florida, uh, barbecuing up at the pool. We met, shook hands, said, hey, uh, nice to meet you. Um, we actually uh, initially got involved in another startup uh, for a friend uh, was doing some cybersecurity stuff. And we said, yeah, maybe we'll go try to work with them. That completely fell apart. Uh, those guys didn't see eye to eye at all. And so Dave and I, having you know, essentially just worked together a little bit, liked each other, said, well, what are we going to do? Uh, one of our buddies was doing retail arbitrage on Amazon. And that kind of got us intrigued. Um, we kind of dipped our toes in that a little bit while we were doing books as well. Uh, we would go around, started off January of uh, 2019. We were hitting up thrift stores, hitting up uh, pretty much, you know, what, whatever we could find for, for books, doing the Goodwill sweeps uh, that I'm sure all you guys are well aware of. And uh, we started trying to figure out how do we do more? Um, if, the, if we want this to be a full-time gig, it's gotta make full-time money potentially. And 
with the two of us partnering up, it's got to make double that. So um, we figured we we the first step was going to be if it really starts earning some money and we start seeing some sales going through, uh, figuring out how we're gonna uh, how we're gonna continue to expand. So looking around, we found uh, book auctions, bigger library sales, stuff like that, where they're moving a lot of stuff and. That kind of drove us into saying, all right, well, if we're going to get a Gaylord of books, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to be bent over all day digging into it. Maybe we need to start looking on Craigslist, find a, a, a tipper or something, and uh, just looking around for how to expand kind of kind of just threw us really rapidly into uh, – we, we, ended, we ended up uh, – jumping into the bookstore, the brick and mortar book business. And um, and then all of a sudden we had warehouse space associated with that. So it was, well, we need a lot more books. Uh, let's try to get a truckload. And that's that's kind of what brought us to here. Yeah, that's that's cool, man. So, I mean, like just a lot of things there, just being able to you know, figure out a better model than, I mean, it sounds like you guys, not only that you, you mentioned like making enough income for, for two, but also um, being able to not spend so much time, you know, like going to thrift stores and so yeah. on. In other words, the books are coming to you. Correct. Yeah. I mean, how much, how much time do you guys think that saves? Like, I know you can't, I mean, I'm Gaylord's like, you know, 800 books could be a thousand books just depending on how many are in it. But um, I mean, how much time do you think it you save having books come to you and I know they're not all going to be good, meet your criteria and so on, but how yeah. much time do you think that saves versus going out and scanning a thousand books? Um, so the, the difference is if we have a, if we have a Gaylord that has, let's, I mean, let's say on the low end, it's got 500 books in it that I can scan. Um, with, with the, the setup we have out here, um, we can do probably a Gaylord in 15 to 20 minutes if we're like really, wow. really excellent. Uh, but you can't go at that speed all day, every day. Uh, so really uh, we're looking at 500 books in uh, in a half hour period, about a thousand an hour. You do like two Gaylords an hour. Uh, you can get through it pretty quick. Now you might, you might have a store that has a thousand books in it, but we're just moving on to the next block of a thousand and you got a half hour that you got to drive right. to get to the store and you get there. Oh yeah. With the stuff we were expecting didn't come in or we haven't got the, do the donations out yet or, you know, whatever, whatever's going on. I mean, you know, granted we have days where half the stuff we're going through is, is just rubbish that needs to be recycled. Right. Uh, no value at all, but um, it's really it just it co it collapses the time frame because uh, I can I can have my guys uh, two guys on the on the belt going through a box knocking two out. I mean, on average, we're probably doing three thousand books a day uh, that were that are actual actually scannable books. Wow, um, we've still got stuff with. ISBNs are going to have to be typed in, which takes a lot of time. But you know, the, I mean, there's when you when you have a Gaylord, when you're buying a Gaylord, every single penny you can squeeze out of there, you want to be able to get out of it because you've already sunk the cost into owning all of it. So even if you only make two cents profit, that's still right profit. Um, whereas when you're scanning a thrift store. Oh nope, not a, not a dollar, not two dollars. You know, you can you can have a much broader criteria of what you will accept and what you'll send in. Yeah, no, and that that totally makes sense. I'd wondered about that because, and and I want to talk about this like kind of this life cycle of a bulk book in a moment. But I mean, you kind of hit on something there that I think a lot of people um, either when they get into the bulk game they don't realize the challenge of it or they do realize the challenge and it keeps them from getting in it's like you know you're still going to have 
that's it. That's maybe the only really big downside here is right. Like you got a lot of books coming to you that you can't maybe sell FBA or even merchant fulfilled and maybe don't go to a bookstore, which we'll talk yeah. about as well. And then you got to do something with them. Right. I mean, that's probably, a, I'm guessing, I mean, what kind of, what kind of chunk of your time and energy is devoted to just, you know, getting rid of, I don't want to say they're all duds necessarily, but just doing other things than like directly selling them yourselves. I mean, how big of a, a challenge is that? So you, you mean like, like percentage wise, what's coming out of it? Like how yeah. much time to sort it and right. all that. So we, we get probably on average. So we have, we have a really, we have a, we have a custom scanning, some custom scanning software because we have a store and we're trying to route things to different, uh, different areas. Um, so, you know, if we scan a book, uh, and you're just scanning for FBA merchant fulfilled, whatever you're, you're just looking at it. And then if it's good, it's good. If it's tossed, it's tossed. Uh, for us, we're not only saying, okay, this is an FBA book. This is, uh, potentially a fiction book, a biography, a memoir, a whatever right. for the different, uh, locations we have within our store. Um, and then on top of that, you're going to have the grandpa's set of road manuals from whatever and encyclopedias <laughs> that, you know, like yeah. all the, all the phone books you ever wanted or were old hymnals from churches. Like uh, I, I remember a couple of times we had a pallet that was like three quarters of it was, was like the 2009 hymnal for whatever. And, uh, <laughs> Doesn't seem like there'd be a doesn't seem like there'd be a big market for that. <laughs> yeah, but the but the main like the big thing is you you want to be able to monetize as much of your inventory as you can. Okay. So even if even if I have to spend time uh, right now sorting out the 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 stuff for recycling, we're we're working and developing relationships, and we're talking to some guys right now so that we can get paid for our recycling. Hmm. So for us, it's still like a little bit of an edge. It's worth taking the time for us to throw out binders, the three ring binders, like all the, 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 the trash that wanders in there, because if it's another potential revenue stream from our inventory, you know, even if it's only a penny or two pennies a pound, uh, when you have, 40,000 pounds of books that you're going through in a week, uh, you can very quickly, you know, make a partial, you know, a couple hundred bucks off of your, uh, off of your duds there. Right. So then it's not so much wasted time. It's just not as profitable time. Yeah. And, yes. and no, that, that makes sense. And, and James has a question, which I think yeah. we're going to talk about just here in a second about the software you use, but sure. I want to talk, in kind of like setting that up a little bit. Um, I had kind of this question about um, the process of like a life cycle of a bulk book, because I know yeah. like, I know David did a video on a different channel, but they didn't really dig into like this, this process. So I kind of wanted to walk through the steps here. I kind of had like some specific questions and maybe you got, maybe you can answer them and just sort of um, give us a good picture about, you know, how it goes from here to here to here. Um, and the first part of that is, all right, you guys have bought Gaylords of Books. I think I think most people watching this are going to know there's ways you can buy Gaylords of Books. Sometimes you could just buy a Gaylord by itself. You can yep. buy a tractor trailer load. There's probably there's partial loads you can buy. There's all different ways to do that. But you guys get a Gaylord in. So you just got like this hypothetical Gaylord of Books. Yep. What's the process in terms of like the quality control, the sorting, the listing? Um how does it like the book comes in, it's in the box. I know you guys have a dumper and you dump on a conveyor belt. What happens to it next? Right. So the, the first touch we have is, uh, uh, it just comes out, it's laying in front of you and they're going to be the couple of things. The big thing is grabbing a book. If it's got a scannable barcode, okay. flipping, flipping it up and sliding it down. Do you set? Do you separate those out by like ISBNs and barcodes at that moment, or is that so later? 
we're just we're just flipping it over, looking for looking for something that scans. Gotcha. It might be a UPC, might be a ISBN. We don't know. Okay. Just get the book flipped over. Um, so all of the stuff that is uh, really old and just like crumbling, that gets tossed. Encyclopedias, uh, most dictionaries, things like that. Yeah. Uh, but then because we have because we have the store, it changes everything for our process. So now Bibles get sorted to one cart. We've got like vin vintage books, just anything that looks old gets sorted to another cart. Um, we will do like bulk kids, like any soft cover kids books that, uh, that bend really easily. Those get pulled aside for a kid's room we have, as well as uh, most of like the really tiny board books, uh, we separate all those out. Okay. And then anything that's left over should be where, and that's kind of what the first guy and then into the second guy is doing, should be a, either one, a book that has a barcode, which gets flipped up, mm -hmm. uh, and or two, a book that doesn't have a barcode, but still has a number or something, and that gets set aside in another pile. Okay. So... So you're kind of like, you're like, you know, you're diverting them out to like, all right, this is trash. This is not usable. Yeah. All right. So, but now we've we're got doing, this patch. We're doing all of like the, all of the easy sorts for us, you know? So like Stephen King, we know we're going to, we're going to make way more money on a used Stephen King book in our store than we are uh, on Amazon. Oh, Here. no. So, and that's a great question. Uh, right. And that makes total sense. But how do, how does like, so do your employees or, I mean, I know you guys are doing some of the work too, because I've seen some of the videos on, on yeah. IG. Like, how do you guys know? I mean, do you just know? Do you have a list? Or are you just kind of like, all right, I think we've sold this before? Or what does it, that it's like? really, it's just kind of like, a. so we've got our bookstore, 321 Books. Right. We, we sell hardcover paperbacks for $1. I'm sorry, hard hardcover. Uh, mass market paperbacks for $1. Soft covers uh, or paperbacks for two dollars, and then hard covers for three dollars. Now, Stephen King, Harry Potter, Rick Riordan stuff like there's J.R.R. Tolkien, anything that's Lord of the Rings, uh, and George R.R. Martin, and maybe a couple others are just so popular here that we sell those books for like five dollars for a paperback, ten bucks for a hardcover. And we can't keep them in the sky. They, right. they disappear. So so we have to train our guys when they're on the belt to say, hey, yeah, this is something that should go. This is a Harry Potter book. This goes in the, the prices mark pile. Okay, this is Stephen King. This goes here. Okay, oh, this is just garbage. Um, or this has a barcode, but half the cover's ripped off, so we're not gonna send that in. You know, we like, we, we're, we're right now kind of expanding it so that any of our guys can work at any position. And it's just, it just takes time and training, you know, and repetition gotcha. to learn how to do that stuff. Yeah, and I guess, you know, you guys, I mean, are you guys, I know you guys get multiple trucks a, a month, but is it enough work to like where the warehouse is you know, running, you know, like a full shift or two shifts a, a Monday yeah. through Friday. I mean, what does that look like? Uh, so we've got about 6,000 square feet here. Okay. Uh, we use uh, usually about a third of it for, um, for storing product that we're waiting, waiting to go through. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've got like another third is where we're doing the sorting right. and where we store everything for our brick and mortar store. And then we've got some office space in the front and a, a couple of shelves and stuff up there. But uh, where we do a little like MF stuff. Um, but, you know, when we when we have like, uh, oh, man, I just totally lost the thread of what I was saying. It's all right. Just went away. Store split or stuff split up. I forget yeah. what. What was your question? Oh, uh, about training them and how. Well, and how and how like you guys are, do you have enough to kind of keep you know everything oh, like running a full shift going. every day and right, right, right. 
So because of how we because because of how we streamline it, you know, okay. we've got multiple sections. So for us, most of our so this we we basically get to split our labor costs in half because if we're if we use the labor for the for the store, mm -hmm. we're, we're we're billing it to the store. If we uh, use labor for the warehouse, you know, it's billing there. But because they because they intermix. Uh, we can we kind of diffuse that down a little bit. Um, so when we have when we have guys sorting stuff for the store or sorting stuff for FBA, like they're kind of like slowly getting trained on uh, on each of those spots and trying to be as as I guess as efficient as we can make them. Right, right, and that makes sense. And this is just a, I just shared a shot from yep. uh, David's Instagram, just showing kind of like the setup with the with the conveyor and so on. Um, yeah. So, all right. So you got this, you got this book, you know, you got like this hypothetical right. book and so it's, it's ready to be scanned. Okay. So now let's say this is going to be an FBA book. So somebody I'm guessing is taking, are they taking this off to the side or like a separate area and they're going to, you know, process this, set it aside. Oh, make shipment. Right, right where, uh, right where you're looking at there, okay. where Dave's, uh, what vape thing is that's usually where we'll have a laptop or a phone or whatever device we're using with a little opticon scanner and okay. we're scanning, we're scanning everything right there so you can it's kind of covered up a little by the comments but we've got all these gay lords on the other side of the belt so we okay. know that the very first gay lord is fiction and popular authors the second gay lord is Biographies, history, memoirs, ah, gotcha. things like that. Third gay lord is cookbooks, jokes, personal development, you know, based on the store layout. And then you've got recycling, recycling. And behind us, you can see we've got like a little cart there on the side. Those are right. carts that we're filling up with stuff that is going to be going to the store. Okay. So when the scan happens, uh, and it says, this is an FBA book. That's usually why you see Dave at the end in some of the videos is because he's actually looking at the book. Okay. This is a, this is a, a Western or whatever it needs to go in this. Like, so he's doing a lot of the sorting and separating and triage there, or right. if we have another person who's helping when we have one of the girls from the store at the warehouse, the whole stack will just go to her after it's been scanned and she'll sort them out based on what she knows has been selling at the store and what we're really short on. Okay. So, and that makes sense. Um, and I'm guessing, you know, obviously you're trying to do a system where you're touching it as little as possible. Yeah. But at the same time, you also need to figure out, all right, what category is this for the store recycle FBA and so on. Yeah. Which I, so it's kind of breaking it down. I like how you guys break it down by subject for the store. That makes sense. It's easy to probably in the back end. Uh, we'll yeah. get to that in a minute about um, what that looks like, but all right. So what's kind of the, I'm going to go back to just us for a minute here. Sure. What is, um, what's kind of the breakdown, you know, what, what percentage go to FBA, what percentage maybe I know you guys said you're doing some merch fulfilled. Um, what percentage is like the store and then what percentage, you know, ends up being recycled or even trashed. I mean, I guess I don't want to say recycled and trash. It's not the yeah. same. So um, numbers wise, Probably we're probably right now. Um, we're probably right now getting about twenty percent FBA. That's good. Uh, I would think 20, right twenty to twenty five. I actually think it's a little low. Okay, um, but but because of where most of our sources come from, mm -hmm. uh, there are books that have like cycled through a center already. Uh, so a lot of times, a lot of like the real big profitable stuff has been scraped uh, from other guys that have gone in and cherry picked. Right. But once it's come off the shelves, you know, because they were selling their books for four bucks, there wasn't any money in this. But now all of a sudden, when it only costs a dime, uh, there's there's profit to be had. Right. So I think I think a lot of what we get is. Uh, is, is, is scraped off, but that's just the nature of our game. Sure. 
you know, cause, uh, I, I live up in BC. Uh, I come down to Florida to help out at the warehouse, like, uh, once a month for like a, a week or two. And, you know, I'm back and forth, um, up there, uh, the, the, the cost per pallet is almost four times as expensive for, uh, for the same, essentially the same product from the same type of source. Uh, it's just cause up there it's so expensive for everything that yeah. the, the prices are, are that inflated. Uh, even, even our like $1 books sell for five bucks up there at the used wow. bookstore. So it's, uh, like it's pretty, it's a pretty big leap for, for what we're doing. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, but that like you know that just kind of, it, for for us, it works out because of the price we're paying. It makes it okay that we're only getting essentially twenty percent uh, FBA. You know, we do about one percent um, merchant fulfilled. But for the merchant fulfilled, we're only pulling books that we're going to make at least six bucks on because we don't have a lot of dedicated MF space in mm -hmm. the warehouse. So I, I guarantee you if like we didn't if we didn't mind scanning those pallets again. Yeah, there's probably I mean, we're probably leaving thousands of dollars. But I, I mean, like per pallet, I'd say there's probably at least. 30, 40 bucks MF in each pallet that we're just skipping on. Right. Um, because it, because it doesn't meet, meet our margin. Right. No. And that, and that makes sense. I mean, you got to draw a line somewhere, right? right. You're like, I can't, you, you, you want to squeeze out the profit, but not all profits worth it. Sometimes you have to decide what is kind of worth it, but you know, um, it just depends on your constraints. Like, so for us, for our MF side right now, it's space. So we want to have a very limited inventory. That's, really easy us for us to find the stuff and we don't have to like hire a dedicated person to do mf because we're not ready to scale to that yet um yeah. we're thinking about it we're thinking like we're all, we're getting ready for when we need to buy another a warehouse and figure you know figure the whole process out um but um, you know until that until that happens until we're, we're actually ready to pull that trigger it's just you know something we're working on right let me pull a couple of these questions before we get too far down the road. Um, and I know there's some things that we haven't really talked about yet. Sure. Um, James asked earlier a few minutes ago, he asked, what sort of software do you guys use for tracking profits? I don't know if he means, James, I don't know if you mean by that, like the profit of the books or do you mean accounting or both? Um, but I guess he might mean like, you know, something like, you know, like Scout IQ is a as a piece of software I use. I mean, what do you guys? So for for use? Santa, yeah, like we were we used Scout IQ up until we uh, we had to get something different for the store to like speed our process back up. We were using Scout IQ as well. Um, if you know, if we had to, we'd jump into the Amazon app. If we couldn't scan something and do a uh, do a picture of the cover to to look stuff up um, and and bounce it you know, bounce it across that way. If you're talking more about how we were, how we were tracking profits after sales, um, I don't want to get into like a, uh, recommend this product cause it may not be the right product for you, but we used uh, inventory labs for our stuff. Hmm. And, uh, there were, uh, there were ways to pull the reports and stuff, uh, into it that made it like, super user friendly and pretty easy to, pretty easy to read and understand. But you can get the same information uh, from Amazon, right? Uh, it, you just have to learn how to read those reports and, you know, convert them to Excel or you know, Google Sheets, whatever you're going to use, and you can mess with the data. You can track all of that yourself. It's just a little more, a little more involved. And I'm lazy. I don't like to do. Yeah, me either. I don't have to. That's that's the stuff computers are good at. So let them do it. Right. <laughs> you know, um, for sure. Yeah, this this other question, I think I probably can answer this one. Books that look new, except for a dot of them, you list them as new. I'm guessing you don't list probably anything as new. No, we uh, we've actually very recently just made that change. We only list uh, as good or acceptable now. Okay. Um, if every now and then uh, we will we will get like sealed cases of books that are brand new. 
Hmm. Um, we will list those as new because you know they're they've never been out of the box. There's not a crease on them. Um, but anything else, uh, I even when we were cherry picking, uh, I, I think we probably maybe listed two or three books as like new. Yeah. Everything was everything was very good if it was a, if it was better than good right. because like I essentially just like notched everything down or wrong. So my very good stuff, I graded at good. My like new stuff, I graded at very, very good because, you know, you're when, especially when you're starting out, nobody knows you. Uh, you right. don't have a reputation yet. Um, when you when you look and you see new seller, some folks are just gonna skip over that and not click on it if they're looking at that stuff. Yeah, and it's so, it's tricky and it's tricky too because if you ever get at, I mean, you're probably not gonna ask for an invoice for a, you know. A fiction book or just a regular run-of-the-mill book but you never know and yeah um, and you don't have any proof of it being new and new is a really tricky one um right. i would i would recommend most people stay away from it and yeah for sure that you truly have invoices then you're then you're good um what do you do with uh dvds and cds i'm sure you guys get some of those in the in the gaylords yeah we, a lot of them we uh we pull those aside and in the sorting process we got a a media section at the store so uh, honestly, like we never we never bothered getting ungated in it yet. Yeah, right. Because um, I I know there's a lot of money in there on Amazon, but we it's tricky. Uh, it's like popular music; you have to get ungated in, and that's the hard one to get. Sometimes. Right. So we'll just like we'll essentially um, just send everything to the store. Uh, we sell CDs for like two bucks and DVDs for three bucks, you know, but for a lot of stuff, you're only making, you know, two, three bucks sometimes, uh, unless it, unless it's some like cool game that everybody wants and, you know, $20 for the game from 2013 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, some of those unicorns out there, those weird but, ones. Right. But so like we, because we monetize that stuff through our store already, we never, we never made the shift to do it uh, with online stuff. Right, right. Now that that makes that makes perfect sense. Um, um, so I'm just gonna. I had a couple other things about the life cycle, but I think you kind of answered most of them. Yeah. Um, but I am curious about the store, and I'm gonna try yeah. to share uh, some some screenshots here in a moment. Um, I read an article about. Uh, I think it was from 2017. Yep. And one of the newspapers there in, in St. Petersburg, um, in Florida. So, and you guys got hooked up with this this store in a mall. Um, what was the backstory on getting that store? Like, I, I read the backstory, but you never know. Like in an article, like if they really told you everything, or if they, you know, misquoted. And there was nothing bad in the article. It was great. Um, but I was just kind of curious, you know, how that came about that you guys got a store in a shopping mall. Yeah. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure which article you're reading, uh, which one it was, but so here, so we actually, we got the store, uh, while we were looking for Gaylord's Gaylord tippers. Um, like I remember, I remember the day we, we found this. Uh, oh, so that yeah, so this yeah. was this was actually the guys who owned the store before us. Okay, okay, we did it. Oh, oh, perfect. All right, now it's starting to make more. Got it. Yeah. So this was uh, these were the original two guys, Bobby and Tim, started this store, and mm -hmm. um, they were also doing uh, Amazon stuff, and basically they were looking at all of their all of their duds and saying man some of this stuff is in really good condition mm -hmm. that why wouldn't why wouldn't this book sell uh right. so they, they, that's how they kind of um how they kind of got going uh and then they uh the, i guess they probably i think probably two years they were open before Bob, uh before dave and i came in and uh, Bobby was one of the guys who owned it before us. Uh, he was selling his his Taylor Tipper and his conveyor belt. So, all right, well, let's go take a look at this. I, 
I remember telling Dave, I was like, I, I have, no, I don't know why we're going out to talk to this guy. We don't have room for a, a dumper yet. Like it's right. a little premature, but whatever, let's go. And then uh, we uh, we popped in here. We were talking to the guy, and he was uh, working in the warehouse. He was like, yeah, we were doing Amazon, and then we stopped doing Amazon to focus solely on the store because the store was doing more for them than Amazon was. And we're, we said, well, hey, do you mind if we dig through your recycle while we're here to just take a look and see what uh, see if there's anything in it? And he's like, yeah, sure, no problem. So we like just we jumped in, uh, probably like three or four Gaylords of recycle he had, and scanned out like five thousand in sales value, uh, which for us at the time was, I mean, that was more than that was mo almost what we were doing in a month in sales. We found in one in one guy's uh, garbage essentially. So we. Uh, we got to talk and we were actually talking with him about trying to figure out how to partner up mm -hmm. because the stuff we were sending into Amazon, he didn't want in the store and the stuff he was putting in the store, Amazon doesn't want. Right. So, uh, you know, we just, we got that relationship built a little bit and then, you know, for whatever reason they said, nah, you know what? We're done with the store. We're gonna walk away. Why don't you guys take it over? Just pay us for, uh, for the truck. Pay us for the, you know, the 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 machinery in the warehouse, and you take over the leases, and it's yours. Uh, so it's a great deal. I mean, I yeah. So Dave and I said, "All right, I guess we're I guess we're gonna be bookstore owners." <laughs> uh, I guess we own a bookstore. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like it, it it was literally that crazy. Um, yeah. and then fast forward, uh, we were, you know, we, we've been grinding this out for about a year now, uh, with the bookstore in tow and, um, you know, we're, we're like really trying to ramp up our, cause at first, you know, we were just, we were in survival mode, keep the store running. It's costing us 20 grand a month in lights and payroll and, you know, mall right. rent and all of that. Like, let's really get this. Uh, get this running. So we like really worked on getting that going. And then, you know, it was, Hey, we really need to, we really need to try to focus on the Amazon stuff as well. And uh, we decided to turn that on. And now uh, our Amazon is, uh, is doubling what we're doing in store sales uh, monthly. I would say it's a, it's a beautiful looking store. I don't know if it still looks exactly like this photo. Um, but it said that it had been in a Gap store. I used to work for Gap years yep. ago, and they built out some nice stores. Yeah, um, no, it was pretty nice. Yeah, so, I mean, is the book, is the store going to be a, uh, is the store going to be a, an ongoing part of the the strategy, I guess? I mean, it sounds like if, it, if it's costing 20 grand a month in operating cost, um, you know, you obviously got to, you know, you break even at that number, but, you know, you don't want to do that because you're putting in work into it and you're not really yep. getting out. So, I mean, is it, is it at a point where like you can, all right, this is what it's costing us. This is how big it is. We think it can be this big, or do you feel like you've sort of capped it to a point where you're like, all right, I don't know if it's really going to grow anymore. And now you got to make a decision. Is this going to be worth it to continue with it or not? Or what does that conversation look like? Yeah. So actually we, we just recently had that conversation. Oh, because uh, I so I moved, I moved up to D.C., right, uh, which took me away from the area. Uh, only coming down when I can. Um, it put a lot of pressure on Dave to handle the day to day for mm -hmm. both for both businesses. Right. And we, and we have them separated as two LLCs. So they're uh, they're completely separate entities. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just because if we if anything happened, we just didn't want to. Right. It's it. Right, go over to both of them, sure. So um, we actually, because we did that, it made it really easy. Uh, you know, we decided, hey, we're gonna let's bring on a partner to manage the store for us. You don't have the time. I don't have the time. Somebody's got to do it, or it's gonna have to shut down. Because I don't want it to just die a slow, fiery death. You know, yeah. we 
uh, let it go with a little more dignity. But um, but yeah, so we're uh, we're talking right now about bringing on uh, a third partner for specifically managing the store, and they'll be they'll be buying all of the inventory from us that were before we were just you know a lot of times just passing stuff back and forth. Right. But we'll continue to uh, you know to 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 get those going as you know as best we can. So if anybody's listening and wants to be partners with Rob and Dave, <laughs> you can send them a message and say, I'll run your store. Um, no, but that's, that's cool. And that makes sense. So, but it sounds like even if you guys move away from the store or this partner still has it, but you guys have a relationship with them, yeah. it sounds like you still have other avenues to deal with your, your duds and your books that don't work for you. Cause I know, I mean, obviously, I mean, I think, isn't that one of the, the big misconceptions I think a lot of people have in books. And I know I've had this misconception is that, all right, you get, you get this bunch of books, you get a whole gala full of books and you're going to pull some out and sell them on FBA, sell some merch fulfilled, but then there's several hundred left. And you're like, well, shit, what the hell? Do, sorry, YouTube. What the hell do I do with all these books? You know, they're sitting here. Um, you know, I mean, what, what would you guys do with, the books that maybe weren't recycled books, but they're not really merch fulfilled or FBA able as well. If if you, the store was not an option, so if the store was not an option, I would still sell them to somebody else. Mm. Um, there are used bookstores in your town, right? That uh, if you approach them and you say, "Hey, uh, I'm so and so. I'm John from wherever." I got a I got an online book business, but I got a lot of stuff that uh, doesn't quite make the cut for me. Can I give you a Gaylord of it? Uh, you can take a look at it and decide if this is something you would consider purchasing from me. And I mean, if it if it's going to be recycled anyway, give it away for free the first time. Right. Let them take a look, and they go, "Holy cow!" These Daniel Steele books look like they've never been touched. I can't <laughs> wait to put these on the shelves. You know, and then wow. you're gonna you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get somebody who who wants what you what you have. And right. if you have if you have the warehouse space, you know what I try to do is I know I need this many books to go to the store. Once I have that many books that are gonna go to the store, what do I do with the rest? Well, I still have really good cookbooks, and I know that a lot of times universities and colleges don't have a lot of cookbooks on their shelves. Maybe I can work a deal out with the campus to to do a swap for cookbooks for for textbooks or something when they retire in addition, you know. Yeah. Or maybe I can maybe I can float this other palette of of uh, fiction to somebody at the flea market who's got a store. I mean, there's like, folks are always looking for that stuff. And even if you only can get, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks for a Gaylord, that's 30, 40, 50 bucks that you didn't have. Right. That you've, you've monetized now. Right, for sure. And especially if you can do it in volume, you know, hey, can you take these 10 Gaylords yeah. for, you know, 400 bucks or 300 bucks? Sure. Um, no, that totally makes sense. And, you know, there's always, I think, I think a lot of people get stuck at that step because they, they get it and they say, well, this is not worth anything because I've scanned it and it doesn't meet, you know, whatever their triggers are, parameters. Right. but that's not really true. It's worth something to somebody. You just have to make the right connection to that somebody. Yeah. So like my, so we, when you're in business, you got to be doing money making activities, right? And you got to figure out if it's worth your time to to sort out the trash and this other good books, but don't quite cut it pile and my other FBA stuff. If you got somebody lined up to take that pallet, then you know that like that's what you want. Let me get you a test pallet. Is that cool? Yeah, okay. And then you just fill it up and you get it over to them. And now you're gonna know real quick whether or not they want you to build another one. Mm. You know, you don't need to continuously build these things with the hope of moving them, right? You just want to 
you you want to have that like ready to go and then execute on the sale that makes you a couple couple of bucks on it. You know, all of our guys, if we don't if we don't have stuff at the warehouse, if we don't have pallets to sort or something to do, like I I, I give them an extra day off. Most of the time they want it. Yeah, I'd love to have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off because right. we don't we don't have any anything coming in and you know they they come back ready to rock so hmm. we're not paying them to be here and not work because we don't have work right. but you know, that's we have all part-time employees that really only work maybe 30 hours a week that makes sense i mean that i was going to ask that question about the employees and so on but i think you answered most of it there um obviously you know you don't I, I mean that well what that ties into like another question I have was and it's kind of two questions. Well, I guess they're sort of similar. Um sure. What sort of limitations do you guys have with this model and that you gotta kind of solve? And that could be, you know, around inventory, it could be around space, it could be around resources. And then, you know, because of that, if you can solve those, you know, how big can this get? Or or do you guys have like a a plan for, you know, like we want to get to, I mean, you know, I always feel like milestones are kind of arbitrary. Like, you're like, are right, we going to get to this many sales or be able to buy this many trucks or, but it's always kind of arbitrary. Like it's just the number you said, there's no right or wrong answer to it. Yeah. Um, but what have you guys had conversations along those lines? For sure. So let me start that with what some of our limitations aren't. Um, some of our limitation, because this is something that we limitations we used to have when we were cherry picking that we don't have anymore. Okay. Or limitations that you might have, right? Number one is if you're cherry picking, you got to be there. Correct. And you can't not be there unless you have folks that you trust with your credit card to buy stuff for you. Right. Um, which some people some people have that and that and that's fine, uh, but you know then it's well, is their judgment the same as mine? Would they grab something I wouldn't? You know all, that whole we don't we don't really have to deal with that. Um, we don't have to deal with fighting other people at the library sale and like shelf hopping folks as they're scanning. And then we're skipping them and scanning, and they're skipping us and scanning. I've run into a few of those. <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't uh, because because we're we're isolated. Like we've we've taken that out of the equation for us. Right. So so what are our limitations? Um, employee turnover. When we have when we have guys that are going to say, "Hey, I'm not coming back," and we bring somebody new in, we got to get them trained up, and that takes time. And then that. And that uh, amount of time, you know, how many $5, $10, $15 books are going to take into recycling because the the corner's ripped and the guy doesn't know that it's not that big a deal for that one. We can, we can send it down the line. So, you know, we have, we have leakage there. Um, Some of the other uh, talking about, talking about scaling, you know where we're where we're, where we were at uh, when we started our first month. We did five thousand in sales on Amazon uh, the last half of January, and we thought for sure we were going to do twelve and a half thousand in February. And uh, end of February rolled around, and we were barely at six thousand. And we were like, "Man, that didn't go at all how I thought it was going to go." Yeah, and. Then, our March was like five and a half thousand and it like it, it went down and we're like, holy crap, what's happening? That shouldn't be happening because now we've got capital tied up in books for three months that we haven't gotten back. And uh, our first our first four or five months were pretty, pretty much right at that level. And um, that was just a matter of competition in the area uh we had we found a a source at salvation army they did book auctions uh every single day they would they would auction off their warehouse of overflow stuff that they couldn't get out to their stores so 
every day we found out there were like eight to nine pallets that we could go and bid on. Um, we might pay a hundred bucks. We might pay 150 bucks. Uh, I think the most we paid was like $250 for pallet. Uh, but that's cause when we were looking at it, digging into it a little bit, it was like 30% textbooks. Right. It was just a lot of stuff. So we're just like, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a lot in that. So, uh, and we lost money on some pallets. Sure. We made a lot of money on other pallets. Um, it's just kind of like, it was just kind of the nature of the game at that time, right? So now we're, we don't worry about that so much. We worry about, you know, when we have like those dud boxes rolling through because you're expecting to get 50. It, like we, I'm a, I'm a pessimist when it comes to es estimating numbers. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, I, I like the, I like to really look at worst case scenario stuff. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I think at the time we were, uh, we were estimating maybe a really bad run would be a couple of Gaylords that we only got 50 books in. Right. So we, we tried to break it down. Here's much, here's how much, uh, you know, the, the truck cost. here's how much it costs per Gaylord per Gaylord divided into per book. Like we need to make at least this much money on average out of every single pallet before we break even, um, you know? And so that cost kind of became one of our concern areas was, okay, how do we get through as many of these as fast as we can with employees that we're gonna train to hopefully make the same decisions that we would make when it came to condition of a book or whether or not it should just be chucked and because uh, uh, even even Dave and I don't see eye to eye on that. He'll sure. have it in his hand and he'll be like, what do you think? Very good. And I'm like, yeah, maybe good. You know, <laughs> like, what, do you, what do you think? And he'll be like, throw it in the trash. I'm like, this is at least acceptable. We can we can do something. <laughs> with this. But, yeah. um, you know, so as that uh, as that kind of like evens out, that really no matter that really no longer becomes like a barrier uh, that you have to overcome. And really, it's just the law of large numbers, right? We're just trying to sort through as much stuff as we can, as quick as we can, to to level out all of those, uh, all of those gaps, right? You see your spikes in sales uh, when you when that pallet finally hits, when those sh when that box hits, it shoots yeah. way up, and it's super exciting to see, and then it like dips down. <laughs> it's like, and you're what just what happened? Three days later, you're like, ah. $20, come on, we can, you know, but it was, it was just in October. Uh, we were doing like hundred dollar days on the downswing. So that was like, that was our bottom. So we had to, we had to really look and say, if we're going to do this warehouse, like if we're really going to run this full time, where does this number realistically need to be based on how much profit we're going to make, you know, from, yeah a thousand dollars in sales like we ramped up in four months from from a hundred to a thousand uh average for daily sales oh nice and, and like that but it like it took a lot of momentum to build and to get everything lined up the right way to to hit that and you guys so, and you guys it sound like too like with your cost of your gaylords your time to process your break even we haven't even talked about like sales ranks and right. velocity of books and things like that. Like you, you learned, I mean, you learned some things along there and you learned some expensive lessons, but I don't know that there's really another way to learn some of those lessons. Like you, you kind of have to do it. You can learn them. Uh, I got uh, come March 15th, 145 books uh, that are going to hit long-term storage fees. Hmm. So that means that a year ago when we were, two and a half months in, uh, we bought 145 books that we thought were going to be good that we haven't been able to move. Right. And I was taking a look uh, through the list. Some of them are textbooks that should have gone for a lot. Some yeah. of them are ranked like under 250,000. Like I would have thought for sure those books would have been out of there, but whether it's something with the repricing software 
or well, I, don't, I have no idea if the, the cost just dipped down that much for yeah. whatever that book is. Like they're just, they're sitting there. So we're, I guarantee you, we're going to have, we're going to have a month where we have a thousand long-term storage fee books that we're going to have to dump. You guys, you know, do you guys dump within a year or at the year mark? So they don't have yeah. that. Yeah. I usually try to, cause I don't know what the markup is, uh, what, what, but I know I don't want to pay it. Yeah. So, it jumps. Uh, it's a decent amount. I say, I want to say it jumps 50 cents. Like right off in that thirteenth month per book, right? You know, so that obviously adds up pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, what, yeah. What about that? I mean, we didn't really talk about rank and volume. I mean, sure. I know you guys have triggers and so on, but I mean, if you're doing a bulk model. I'm guessing your eight, your average selling price is lower, although yeah. obviously not for some things like textbooks and so on. It's going to be high. What I mean, do you mind sharing any of those numbers or? Yeah. You know, if you if you don't, that's cool too. So, like we used to, we I mean, we had probably six or seven different trigger sets in scout IQ okay. um, that we would, that we would kind of flip through based on where we were sourcing books uh, based because we knew if we were at the Salvation Army and we were going through bins there, we knew what, what, what kind of books were going to be in that Gaylord. And we knew if we were going to this thrift store that they were going to have, you know, whatever, and we could like customize that stuff. So, you just hit the one for that store when you would go there and you scan through that store to, to get the stuff you want. Um, but that drastically changed when we started doing bulk, because now, you know, if you're paying for the entire palette, you're paying for the duds in there as well. Uh, so all of a sudden, uh, a 20 cent profit doesn't look too bad. So if, if it's under, I think we have it set to uh, maybe 500,000. I think it's if it's like under 500,000, we'll take a 20 cent profit. Okay. Um, now, now, is that, let me clarify something. Is that 20 cents after your cost of the book and some sort of labor right. operating costs figured in there? I mean, I don't know exactly what your number is, but yeah. you're guessing it's going to cost us this much to process this book. Right. Because I know. I know we can get through on average a hundred or a hundred FBA books will come out of two pallets in an hour. And I know how much I pay my guys in an hour. And so I can, I can estimate my, my employee cost per book scanned. So gotcha. um, it's just, you just take a, a really broad average and you say over time, this is what it trends to. Uh, here's where here's where our line is. Um, the more stuff you sell in, uh, send in, the more your um, shipping costs are going to go down. Because once you once even even if all you're doing is sending in five six boxes, instead of sending them all in regular uh, regular mail, you can make an LTL. If you can find a spot with a forklift, make a pallet, do an LTL pallet. And you'll save like half on shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, we probably pay to send in, um, I think the last shipment was a little over 3,000 books. And our shipping for that was like $165. Oh, wow. That so is that, really big savings. Yeah. Now, like, wait, so you're saying you can go, and I think I already know the answer to this because you're saying you can go to somewhere else that offers, you know, or has a warehouse or has a dock. Yeah. And do an LTL shipment through them. Yep. Or just even maybe you're borrowing somebody's space. I mean, you guys have a warehouse. You can, but I mean, if it's, if it's worth the, depending on how much stuff you're sending out, mm -hmm. it might be worth it for you to rent uh, a storage unit mm -hmm. at a place that has a, that has a, a forklift there. And you can essentially with 24 hour notice have use of that forklift. Right. Um, so you're not even really renting the the space for the, the unless you want to sit in a box and work in there. You know you can, but uh, you, you're just you, maybe you put the pallet in there, you build it in there, you unload it from your car, okay. and then you get it out. You okay. know, at, for eighty bucks, hundred bucks, uh, you're going to save more than that if you if you're sending out two of those a month. I don't know. Right. It, right. it just depends on how much you are when you're picking. 
Yeah, the, the tricky part for most people would be, like you said, like getting the books to the unit because, you know, I've, I've tried working out of a storage unit and I don't even want to think about doing it in Florida in the heat. <laughs> but, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's not 90, fun. Yeah. It's not fun. But, um, but, I, but I think the LTL, that's something that I've always um, been interested in. We had a warehouse for a while a couple of years ago and we had FedEx Ground who was picking up, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 of the big 24 by 18 by 18 boxes from us, you know, like every day for yeah. like a couple months. And I, and it, and it was so much cheaper. Like I would see the shipping cost and I went, Oh my gosh. Like if you just did this and took it to the store, yep. um, it would be crazy expensive. It would have been like, you know, triple. Um, so yeah. yeah, definitely an option. We, it, when we had, when we had a couple hits where we had, 10, 12 boxes going out and it was $340 in shipping. We we're just like, Oh man, we got to start doing pallets. Like, yeah. So, so we did. <laughs> so a pallet, so a pallet would be, you're talking about like the little small, let's say like the Lowe's box or the Walmart box. It's probably what about 20 of those maybe, or 25 Boxing? of those boxes. Like well, a pallet. uh, so we'll do, we'll pack out 34 box, uh, 34 boxes okay. on a pallet when we're shipping. Uh, so we usually do like two pallets a week. So we got, uh, we got 64 going out on two pallets. They each weigh about thir uh, 12 to 1300 pounds, about the same number of books, okay. 11, 11 to 1300 book per, uh, maybe a little more per pallet. It depends. Like when you get, we start getting into all the mass markets and stuff. They really take up a lot less space. So yeah, um, but we never did mass markets when we were cherry picking because uh, usually the cost of them, and then you're trying to fight with the MF guys, uh, and it just it becomes a pain in the butt, right? To, to you know try to find the one that you can make a couple more dollars on, right? Uh, we we for a long time we weren't even touching them. Uh, here and then we decided, hey, let's let's we we recalculated our average cost for per book based off of shipping and based off of everything, and maybe we should try scanning these with the new colors. And uh, we started we started finding uh, an extra twenty to thirty bucks, you know, per like five hundred books we were scanning essentially, which. It seems, you know, seems like something you'd probably pass on if you're in the, it, you know, you might pass on it if you're, if you're scanning at the thrift store when that only, you know, a couple, you know, a couple of quarters of books sometimes or a quarter, but we can make 20 cents on a book. We're going to try to make 20 cents on that book because that comes right back out of our, our sunk yeah. cost for, you got it's a sunk cost. You already have it. You've touched it. You've processed mm -hmm. it. It makes, it makes a lot of sense. Um, well, listen, we're kind of the, 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 definitely the one hour mark with here, here with you. So I just want to wrap this up. Sure. What would you say to somebody um, who is thinking about getting started in bulk, but you know, they're going to have all the same changes at, or changes. They're going to have all the same concerns that, like you guys had, and probably even other ones, you know, I, I don't know if I have the space. I don't know if I want to invest some money. How do I get through the, I mean, what would you say to somebody who was kind of on the fence about it, if you would recommend it or not, or or maybe you wouldn't recommend it, you would say, yeah, if you're on the fence, don't do it. You need to be all in. What would you say to that person? So the reason we're doing bulk now and not doing retail arbitrage or not cherry picking uh, is because we don't want to work. Um, doing bulk, we can... Interesting. We can get to the point where I can take a cookie cutter cutout of the operation we have here and I can move it to this other spot and drop it down and it can run. Hmm. Um, it can run with because if, if I'm a if I'm a critical cog to the machine, right. if I can click, the machine shuts down. If I'm the only one with the credit card and I can't swipe it, I might miss out on a truckload. Uh, and that can be a whole week's worth of work that I was planning on having that all of a sudden has evaporated. So I want to make sure that the operation runs without my fingers in it 
Dave wants to make sure that the operation can run without his fingers in it. Yeah. Um, so if you if you want to do bulk, like for us, the reason was we wanted to we wanted to be able to scale it past what we could do. Um, we wanted to leverage other people's time mm. to to continue to make money for us. Yeah. And uh, in 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 doing that, bulk for us was the very real jump in. Okay. Because we wanted to scale it. If you don't want to scale your business, uh, if you can't trust somebody uh, to authorize payments on your behalf tied to your name, uh, it it's only going to be able to get so big because you can only do so much by yourself. Even if I give you all of my sources and you are going to be able to get product from them, uh, if it's just you versus my team, yeah. we're going to we're going to outwork you every single time and you're going to be doing, you know, a truckload a month, which is great. Uh, or, you know, a truckload in two weeks or a truckload, you know, in one week. But if we can bang one out in two days, uh, and have another one in here, dropping a load off and bang that one out, like how fast can you work at that pace? Cause this is our chill. This is our chill play pace right here. Right. Um, so, you know, like that's what that's what you kind of want to be looking for. If you're if you're happy uh, not spending as much money, because it's it's also a lot it's a lot more expensive. Uh, all of a sudden, I have employees. I have you know truck rentals. I have shipping fees. Um, yeah, you're paying gas and you're driving around, but maybe you only want to make uh, you know a couple hundred bucks here and there. Uh, and that, and it's an easier way to do it. You can be way more selective and only take books that are under 250,000 where I'm going to take a book that's, that's ranked under 2 million and send it to FBA. So, uh, it's really, it's just about your level of risk and what you're comfortable with. Yeah. If you're, no, no, that's great, man. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to catch up. Yeah, Please continue. If you're, if you're uncomfortable, you know, working with other people, Bulk might not be a business you want to try to build because you can't build it from afar. Like Dave and I are on the belt in the middle of August, you're sweating in Florida when it's a hundred degrees out. And, you know, you've got the fan blowing on you and it ain't doing you any favors. Like yeah. it, it's just, it's just, you know, it's, it's what it is. So when you're, when you're grinding, you can train your people to do exactly what you want to do. And they'll see, you know, it's leadership. They're going to see what you're doing. They're going to know, okay, yeah, Rob would toss this because maybe they don't know and you're down below them on the belt. So it gets passed down and then they see you throw it and they're like, okay, I should have thrown that uh, next time I will. But you know, like that's, that's just kind of your personal choice there. You gotta, if you can, if you can take the risk, do it, but realize you got overhead, your rent, your utilities, you know, the internet, all the little things that like you don't really think of, you're going to have fire, fire inspection fees. Uh, you're going to have to have insurance for your warehouse because the lease requires it. Right. Um, so like all those other little costs you have when you're ready to go or you think you're ready to go, try to add up what you think your expenses are going to be like do a real good scrub on it. And then, expect to not be able to pay that bill for at least two months, three months before you're going to be able to pay it full from what you're doing at the new place. Hmm. That's the, that's one of the big reasons we haven't tried to move. We could get a, a bigger space, handle more stuff, but I would rather be efficient and max out what we're doing here because then there's less risk for us to move into a bigger space and take on a larger lease. And then all of a sudden, Oh no, we're not doing what we thought we were going, or we couldn't get the sources in this month, or whatever happened. Uh, you know, it's it's better to it's better to be efficient than to just throw money at it, hoping that it's gonna gonna work out. So just make sure you have a plan, and then pull it over if it looks solid. No, that's that's great, man. There's a lot of good stuff there in that. I'm gonna have to save that clip you just did there at the end because that was really fantastic. All the things to think about. Great. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight and checking out the show. Um, obviously, uh, I put in the title as Dave's name and Rob, his business partner, was here, who was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Shared, 
Dave's, well, I'm going to spin you around. Dave actually walked in here. I'm, I'm <laughs> on Instagram, he's, so we're okay. Yeah. Oh, he's like Instagramming. All right, so we're all like here together. <laughs> That's cool, man. But I, I really appreciate you guys coming on. And man, that was just like a ton of great knowledge. Um, I've got some links in the show notes for Dave if people want to reach out to you. I know you got I know you're building out some social media stuff on Instagram and YouTube. Rob, do you have anything like that to share? Or are you just sort of on the DL? Uh, I haven't set mine up yet. I'm I will. I'll get you guys something. Okay, cool. Cool. When you do that, we'll uh, I can go back and always edit to this video and so on. But for sure. I want to thank all you guys tonight for coming out. Um, be sure to leave comments and questions and click the like button if you like the video and contact these guys, especially if you want to learn about the bulk game. But I can tell from just talking to them tonight, um, they also have really great business minds too, which that's valuable, even if you're not going to talk about books. Oh, so sure. um, thank you guys for coming out tonight and sharing this info with us. And uh, everybody else, we'll see you guys soon. Take care. All right.